tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Oh, the projection schedule's still here, so let's try it. The speaker comes to- Good evening. Please repeat. Yes. Good. Mm. Please repeat. Good. I've unlocked the production schedule. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Fortress accident. Is there any- Thank you. Tiles on the print. cube are st- with a quiet determination. The printer starts printing, a piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters covers its surface. Read. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott, about Wirral Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. I want to know about the money. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 Ria, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 Ria, with only half of the game finished. Where'd they get all this money? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Who worked here for how long? Fortress Accident employed 18 people, the bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts, and a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Pyrolidon in the basement to escape his obligations. Skim, the, skim through the production schedule. The production schedule depicts the glorious descent into bankruptcy. What happened? It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a 4 million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. They couldn't. I could have bridged the gap. So they were done in by their own ambition. No. Even then, success remained within an ever-narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. What is that? At the 11th hour, the lead designer, Jinsk-born Suliswav Jalisa, decided that what Wirral Untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. This place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. Wow, this is some insane, insane shit. Who are these people? The world had never seen their kind before, and might never again. How many heads were there? So many. The last count. There were approximately 10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. How many combinations could you make out of that? Do you really want to know? There seems to be a calculation here, but it may take a while. Yeah, go ahead and do it. <gasps> oh my god. I broke it. <laughs> I broke it. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. <gasps> I broke it again. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what if you broke the radio computer? What if it's never going to stop? Please stop. I broke it. Okay. And that's it. That's what did it then? Well, yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. Explain that. On the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness before the Egaunian investors pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day, an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel Front. 
just as the World Untethered project was being compiled that day. And the anomaly caused all the data to get lost in the air? When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider. But despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. They lost the whole game and wouldn't pay for it? Always read the terms of service. What about a, the, a backup copy? Mysteriously enough, it seems that the offsite copy happened to be on site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the offsite copy and, well, keep it offsite. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. What does it say? S. Lukanen Kilda, the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The offsite copy was on site because there was no offsite anymore. Not for me, not after eight months of crunch. I didn't have a home anymore, so I started keeping it in the basement in the ice bear refrigerator near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. Seems perfectly reasonable to me. That's not what her colleagues thought. Is there anything else from this lead programmer? The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. All right, read the notes. Four months later, by an unknown author. I am the only one left and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under too. Slipstream switched to making skis and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right though, something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez, all of it. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revachol West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is Saint Brune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Tear off the printout and throw it away. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Remove the production schedule. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. Insert the offsite copy. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play again. The speaker comes to life. Good evening, please wait for the password. Still nope. No. No, that's not it. Life after death isn't it? Maybe it's the second part of the light motif you saw on the stained glass window. After death life again. Good. I've unlocked the offside copy. Kaching. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Thank you and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. It sounds like something cracks <gasps> before the piece of paper starts filling up with pure black ink. No! Something's broken. Machines aren't supposed to behave like this. Remove the copy. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. Did it break? Read the printout. The paper is soaked with ink. It's monochrome darkness spanning from margin to margin. It's not possible to make out any information. All right, let's examine it again. A single speck of white shines out from the shade. For some reason, the printer decided to spare this one tiny dot of paper. Marked by the devil itself. Looks like gibberish. Better get running again. Tear off the printout. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. Casting the framework in a... Oh wait, did I remove the filament? Tiles on the cube are still okay, good. smoldering. Did I break it? Is it broken? Offsite copy. This filament contains information. Okay. Doesn't say I broke it. I, I have concern. But it doesn't say it's broken. Alright, let's get out of here. Yes, what is it? Uh, about the two millimeter hole again. The swallow, you mean? Nothing. What about it? Okay. Great, thanks. The offsite copy. Yes? I brought the filament. 
Oh, is this the filament you're looking for? Show her the production schedule. No, that's the production schedule you stole and accessed without authorization. I don't need it. She taps the table in a badly concealed impatience. I brought you the filament. Thanks. Looks like it's the one. She shakes the filament, inspecting the metallic tape on its side. What's going to happen now? Now I'm going to print it out to see what's left of it. Oh, God. She's already inserted the filament into the computer's core, ready to close the door. There's nothing but a speck of white and a sea of ink. It's broken. What are you hoping to find? I have a theory. Lintel was able to divine the location of the anomaly from this broken copy. I want to repeat their calculation, only this time with better equipment. Watch. What an intricate display of failure. The paper starts filling out with ink, soaking it in a gleaming blackness. Not a single line of data stands out. This is wrong. Machines shouldn't behave like that. Play it cool now. Uh, something's very wrong with that filament memory. Sona doesn't reply. Her hands running over the printout. She's looking for something. For her morning star. Eyes scouring the millimeters. Here. I found it. Oh, the white dot. I won't tell her I printed it out. Where? Hold on. She's behind the keyboard now, typing in some numbers that only she understands. The terminal beeps, and the light inside starts pulsing like a glowing heart. Can I do anything? Shh. Just give me a second. I'm almost... She clocks up her typing speed. Done. I've got it. I found the location of the anomaly. She bumps her fist in the air. You found the coordinates? I found the coordinates. <laughs> She's beaming. You can feel it in your heart. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. So where is it? Where's your two millimeter hole in the world? There. In the swallow. She points at the other end of the church where a group of water bowls forms a ritualistic arch. Think you can help me again? She tilts her head, her eyes sparkling. Sure. I need you to go move those water bowls for me. I need to double check my calculations. Okay. You like moving things around. Moving things around is calming. Thanks, Just walk over to the circle and follow my instructions. Move the third bowl two centimeters to the left and the fourth bowl five centimeters to the right. This should do the trick. Third, two, fourth, five. Two left, five right. Oh Thanks. God. Third, two, fourth, right. Am I going to have to remember this? Third bowl. This one? Third, two... It's awfully silent again. As if someone turned off the entire world outside those walls. Water inside the bowls stands still. Measurements have been marked down around the bowls, each chalk-drawn line representing a centimeter on the floor. Oh boy, this is going yeah. to be good. Move the third bowl from the left two centimeters away. Move the fourth bowl from the left five centimeters to the right. Okay. It moves like a ghost without creating a single trace of sound. Move the fourth bowl. Some water spills out of the bowl, wetting the floor. The lead programmer sends you an encouraging thumbs up from across the hall. Time to run back, or maybe walk. This is a sacred place, after all. <laughs> I haven't paid any attention if I've been running. Yes, what is it? Now move the water bowls like you asked with the next. Great. Everything should be aligned now. She bites into her chapped lip. Miss Know-It-All is hesitating. What's wrong? Yeah, uh, nothing. Now the only thing left to do is to unmute the headphones. If we got the location right, we should then be able to hear whatever sound this anomaly makes. Is the cool woman Dakwa up there? <laughs> Why did you have your headphones on mute in the first place? Honestly? Honestly, I'm a little scared. She's avoiding your gaze. Is it gonna be just- isn't it gonna be just silence? I don't know. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. She stares at the heart of her computer. I mean, what sound does the nothing make? How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? She turns to face you, the mainframe throwing shadows on her chin. What if silence is only what surrounds it, but the swallow itself is... She grows silent, her face very pale in the cold light of electricity. What? 
I don't know. I'm just scared. Maybe it's going to be something terrifying. M maybe it's going to tear the world apart. Like that evil ink that filled the printout, erasing coherence and meaning. I think you're overthinking this. Maybe. Maybe I'm just tired. She rubs her face. It's scary, but we have to face it. Yeah. You're right. Let's do it. She puts on her oversized headphones, ready to press unmute on the keyboard. And then, nothing. Nothing happens as Sona Loken and Kilda presses unmute on her keyboard. Nothing but silence. You can hear some small animal cross the floor in the chancel. It's that quiet in the sanctuary. Say nothing. She doesn't talk. Her eyes closed and brows knitted together in a state of deep focus. One hand cupping the headphone. Well? Damn it. She lets out a loud sigh before tearing off her headphones. She's still avoiding your gaze. Did you hear anything? No, of course not. Nothing happened. Let's move on. She's clearly disappointed. Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. What do you mean nothing happened? Did you find the swallow? No. She rests her face on her hands, massaging the forehead. No. My hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something, if I got the coordinates right. Like I said, silence is only what surrounds it. But this... This is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence. That's all it is. You can try on the headphones. See if you can hear anything. But don't get your hopes up. Silence is silence? You're sure there's more to it? <laughs> Call Mama Dakwa. Let's... Let's save. Just in case. Yes, what is it? Everything disappears. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. What does that mean? It feels like flying on an aerostatic. Or when your ears pop. Or like a subtle difference in the atmosphere. A weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear it? Take off the headphones. What if we just need a better sound system? A better sound system? All right, but where would we get one? Suddenly, a rhythmic beat permeates the walls, causing a small patch of decorative stucco to crumble onto the wooden floor. From your neighbors. You mean the speed freaks? She closes her eyes as more dance music invades the holy silence of the sanctuary. Of course. The Speed Freaks. They have a fantastic sound system. And you think they would help me? They would if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Hey. Brilliant negotiating there, Detective. As always. I'll go talk to them. Sure. Let me know how it goes. Thanks, officer. <laughs> Away we go. I don't know how useful this is to our overall investigation, but you know what? I will have lots to tell Kim. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Yes? What's um, the deal? I managed to convince Sonya she's okay with you guys moving in, but she needs your speakers for her project. We are grateful, Copman. You're an augury of a new era of a nodic dance music. The speed freak smiles happier than he's ever been before. You're gonna have to share space for a couple weeks until she gets her research finished. That's fine. We can manage. He grins, excited. And you're still sure about keeping our little side business, right? Oh, you mean the illeg uh, illegal drug lab? There'll be no shady shenanigans in the church. Only love and an onotic dance music. Fine. We can make do. It's going to take us a bit to move our stuff inside. A couple of hours, maybe. Come check back later. Let's get moving. Leave the tent. So I don't think... He said a couple of hours, so I probably have to sleep and come back. Oh, Goodness, they are gone. They are gone, gone, gone. All right, let's see if we can get back in the church or not. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's all set up, man. Can you already imagine a thousand people in here? Ten thousand. He waves his hand in an unbelievably lame, non-hardcore manner. Ecstatic vibrations. Totally transcendent. 
and I've finished setting up the new compressor too. He looks at the imposing black box in the corner that's churning out the sound. Now the only thing left to do is the name of the club. Will you do the honors, detective? What do you pr propose as the name, Andre? The name? Everything I managed to come up with sounds just wrong. Andre's overthinking it, says the girl with the microphone. Yes, you should do it, detective. It would be good for the signs. Hmm. Noid's right. You've helped us so much. It's the right thing to do. What about... Oh, I don't remember her name. Acel? How about something simple? Like the club? Too modern. And too ironic. We don't want ironic. We want real. Real and true and beautiful. Like a morning after the rave. Tequila Sunset? <laughs> I think I've come up with a name. You have? Well, what's the name? Oh, Disco Elysium. No Truce with the Furies, Revishal. What was new? No Truce with the Furies? What was that? Oh, No Truce with the Furies was the original title for Disco Elysium. That's where I've heard that before. Let's name it Disco Elysium. Like that DeLorean word for the world, you mean? Elysium. But Disco Elysium? Isn't it wacky? Disco's kind of gone, isn't it? Forgotten. The past is the future, but the future is dead. No, it's beautiful. Beautiful and brave, like we want it to be. And short. And memorable. It's settled then. Everyone welcome to Disco Elysium. A light beam washes over the dance floor, bathing it in violet blue. Andre breaks into frenzied dance-like motion to celebrate the name. Someone turns up the beat. You should go with the flow. Join in on the experience. All right, start tapping your foot. It feels good. It feels right. But what is this? What is this thing that Andre is doing with his limbs? What are you doing, Andre? I'm dancing. He performs yet another strange pattern of moves, but it doesn't look very cool or modern. It looks kind of lame. That soft core gyrating is supposed to be dancing. We should talk about it. We should talk about your so-called dancing. Yes, my man. He jumps up and down with glee, his moves punctuated by the stroboscopic flash of the club lights. Talk? What is there to talk about if you can express yourself with moves? Audio waves thump against your ribcage. The speaker setup makes everything sound much better. But there's a noticeable lack of something. What's with the hair? It's to express my individuality. Is that a bald spot? It's hard to tell for sure, with the fused together spikes but it looks like he's balding. Is it important for you to be an individual? Of course it is. Otherwise, I'd just be another poor guy with no education and no money. General issue, man. Now I'm all that, and I have radical spikes. Are you balding? Well, because I'm balding, yes. <laughs> I want to fuse the remains of my hair together before it leaves me. I want to show my hair. I don't give a fuck how old you think I am. I'm 20. How old are you? Not 20. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe it was a bad idea. Anyway. Well, I don't have enough solve of fire to, to pass this. Goodbye, officer. Maybe I should put a point into that. Because I don't think... Yeah, I have no points in this. Let's level that. I know I have some clothes. I don't think that helps oh, me man. any. It's good to see you. Impossible. Alright. Okay, let's talk to... You? No, not you. You. You got us in, cop. I can't believe you got us in. He looks around the hall, examining the carpentry. With wonder in his sharp eyes. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority. But you, you really came through for the hardcore underground. Do you have a moment to talk? What's on your mind? What do you think about this church? It's a miracle of carpentry. Dead bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. He rubs his hands together. What do you... How old do you think the church is? 320 years. A little more. The first settlers built it. Plus six more like it. On the coast here was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something. I understand. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, forced to face themselves and nature. Pre-industrial quantities of solitude, the sea, perhaps something more fundamental. 
He means something paranormal. He must... I would want to build a safe place for myself and my own as well. His voice echoes in the wooden cavern of the church. What style is this church built in? A cop who's in the building critique. Okay then, this is folk DeLoreanism, lawmonger, huh? It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. And what is DeLorean architecture like? Total. Everything between an ancient concrete cathedral and a glass cube is DeLoreanism. This is just an homespun version of it. Folksy stuff. Early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you out? What would a DeLorean building look like? Like that woman there. Vertical, thin, white. A false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug that power vertical. He points toward the stained glass window. Like to show off large and intricate structures. Arches, spires, put your damn with them. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know. Marriage shit, virtue and tyranny. This church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. Stands to reason it used to be white on the outside before the sea wind took all the paint off. He peeks out of a small window in the dark. Year after year, flake after flake, whitewashed clean then covered in green moss. Slowly, peeled by the wind, your skin crawls from the sensation as you look around. What did you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies of perennial plants. Sigma functions have left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. He taps on the wood. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. Have you heard this one, cop man? After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother weren't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is an high-quality carcass. The power of a nodic beats and hard bass is needed to reanimate it. He kicks the floorboard. Where's that quote from? A Sarai's man who lived a long time ago. An ancient hardcore brother. What you're saying is you're not a big fan of the innocentic system? A 3,000 year old tyrannical regime of history built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self-appointed intellectuals. It's false core. But you guys said the Ecclesiastes were all about love and hardcore before. I only said unity. One word. Figures of authority always misquote you. Andre doesn't care about the Ecclesiastes. He just wants the operation to run smoothly. And Egg is a demi-beast. You shouldn't listen to what people say. You should listen to what they are. I even agreed with you about the Ecclesiastes being okay with this. But were you wrong? The founded party is okay with everything. Look around. They don't have enough love for the human crew to oppose anything anymore. We're on our own. That's still a lie. Reassert yourself. That wouldn't be cool. I want to be cool. Mule and wimp. <laughs> Pathetic. You propose dance music will supplant the system? Anodic dance music. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. How do you like the glasswork? Point to the window. I don't. Fuck her giving me the evil eye. That's her innocence, Dolores Day. You defend her, law minion. She was a mass murderer. What's up with that? Mellow man, mellow. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murder on the floor! She's the innocence of humanism. Humanism seems to be a pretty big deal around here. Humanism leads to eating sugar and pigs. Humanism was invented to mass produce billions of humans. Billions of humans can mass produce hundreds of billions of pigs. She liked games. Her legacy, the thing we live in, isn't real life. It's a strategy for some kind of victory. 
against a long dead opponent. But, yo, I'm only annoyed. What do I know? She's pretty. Who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? I do feel there's something terrifying about her. Isn't she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? The world spirit does not have a body. It has organs. Ardcore is an organ of the world spirit. Okay. He raises his left hand. This Arno Van Eyck is an organ. The carpentry and glass cutting that built this ass are also organs. She's a thief, if you ask me. An organ thief. All innocences are. Would she say she was human? <laughs> I like this question, cop man. She did not live the life of a human. She lived like someone who's playing a game. The life of an operator. That's not the life that humans live. She was adored. Humans aren't. I don't know about you, but they hate me. And they do not think I'm innocent. Or some shit like that. Yeah, they hate this too. Point to yourself. Well, they loved her. They put all their love in her and forgot all about the rest of us. The young man lets go of the suspenders and they hit his chest with a slap. I do feel there's something terrifying about her. There is. She is a party repellent and must be taken down before we can begin partying in here. Alright, take her down, crash it, and destroy the window. Will do. The speed freak nods and pets the toolbox as if it were a cat. No, Noid! Stop twisting my melon, man! <laughs> People are gonna love it! It'll be our thing! Plus it keeps the cold out! Well, there's gotta be, what, a wall behind that, I would think. I'm, I'm done talking about it. Alright, she's pretty. She invented the beauty you're feeling. She and her glass cutters and iconographers. You set the standard, alright. Then you meet it. It's effective like that, but it is also very soft of core. That so-called beauty of hers. If it's anything but soft core, it's terrifying. I like it harder core. It seems I like it soft. You wouldn't be the first. Millions liked her. She's got those mass murdering lips. Yeah, but who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? No one says Arno Van Eyck is a mass murderer. The anodic pioneer Rietveld is not a mass murderer. He is not accused of mass murder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Likewise, no one says Jermaine Egged or Andre are mass murderers. You can live entirely outside that suspicion. Billions of people go about not being guilty of mass murder. Just not her. All right, I'm done talking about her. What a strange choice of words. I don't want to think about her anymore. Caustic, overflowing with negativity. That can't be yeah, nothing. Stop. What's happening here? Why do you keep coming back to this window? Oh, I I double clicked it. Nothing. Everything's okay. It's a nice window. Why do you keep saying that if it isn't making you feel well? Don't come back to this anymore. Stop talking about that damn window. Okay. Anything else? Mass murderer. No. Okay. okay. How are you settling in? Hard to say, cop man. Signs in here are distinctly wild. Gonna take a while before everything's properly synced. I did get to talk to the crab man though. Oh, Tiago? Anyway, he's been giving me kind of a psychic rundown of this place. Dude's seen some crazy shit. But he's actually a lot like us. All of his mother love stuff isn't too spooky for you? Have you been listening to what Egg's been saying? Love is hardcore, man. And the mother's love is the hardest core of all. The man picks up on stuff. And he knows a lot about the church. I got a lot to learn from him. Good thing you didn't squash him. <laughs> I want to talk some more about this place. What did Tiago tell you about the church? The crab man's been lurking here for a while. He's experienced things. Things that give off bad signs. As far as we can tell, the Ubies built this place about 320 years ago as a sarcophagus. Are there dead bodies here? Not like a literal sarcophagus. 
I'm just being metaphorical. What's it for? Encasement, confinement of something they were afraid of. Something new and unheard of on the Isola. I think that's what the crab man is experiencing when he climbs around upstairs. Like, this is some old world shit the Ubies had heard about. I thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church surrounding it to contain it. Contain what? I don't know. And it's not something they properly understood either. What it does. But it's what this sonar person is looking for and trying to measure. He nods toward the woman. It'll be fruitless, though. She won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything. All those things they really can't. The wood creaks as a gale blows by, outside. Dust particles fall through the darkness, settling down on the age-bleached floorboards. The structure does not feel particularly durable. This building seems less than structure you sound. No. It's pretty fucking unsound, if you ask me. They should have built a club for anodic music around it instead. He grins. Anodic music will definitely contain whatever we're dealing with. His words echo in the chamber. And if it can't, well... He shrugs noncommittally. What makes you think Sona's gonna fail? Seems to be the trend around here, doesn't it? You can't measure shit like this. It's not like substance. I found doomed commercial area in Martinez proper. Maybe it's the same thing the Ubies were trying to contain? Like a concentric ring spreading out. The struggling villages. And that is what caused the communards to fail in defending the beachhead. Yeah, a lot of failure has gone down around here. You think there's any merit to the theory? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's not a thing we can answer, cop man. Even I have limits. I'm a limited side person. Well, I guess if it's without substance, there's nothing to worry about. Maybe you can figure things out, cop man. I think we got on a good level here. The signs are syncing up well. Uh, more about the place? Body, nope. Spirit entered. What is sure? Why are you so suspicious about everything? Suspicious people are esoteric people. We don't go around spilling everything to Johnny Law. They don't call me Noid for nothing. It took us setting out for this whole enterprise to get our signs synced. Why are you called Noid anyway? It's short for paranoid. What? What good is being suspicious? A reasonable question. Say I get hurt. I want to make sure it never happens again. So I analyze the situation. Exercise caution. Caution is suspicion. What are you suspicious of? Ah, uh, it'd be easier to list stuff I'm not suspicious of. I'm not suspicious of sand and color. Mechanics and chemistry also have a trueness about them. Most anything else deceives. Wants to steal your life away. This is a good, dangerous line of questioning. You should prod him on. What are the most suspicious things? I don't have a top ten list of things I'm most suspicious of, but if I had one, the left-right complex would be number one. Number two would be their sole accomplishment, the pig wheat paradigm. Something is off here. You feel like it should be the other way around. You don't mean the left-right paradigm and the pig wheat complex? No. Politics is an inert complex of daily corruption and inane think pieces. The real paradigm is economic and it concerns pig and wheat. This is where the innovation happens. It's only a theory, but I suspect they're breeding a pig wheat hybrid. Probably in grass. <laughs> okay, tell me more about the left right business. I prefer not to. Both ask the wrong questions. Any spark of light from either one is accidental. Their combined movement's only concern is producing enough pig and wheat for everyone. The end goal of humanity. The original mistake was assuming that words have more being than bodies. That's what led us astray, far from our true lives. But we may yet find a way back. Whatever this true life is, 
You feel it's the real centerpiece of this mythology. What's suspicious about the production of pork and wheat? It's our only shit! We should make better use of not being animals or cereal grain ourselves. What's bad about cereal grain? Having enough food could be a precursor for greater things. Yes, having food is means to an end. But the left never talks about the end, only the means. Caps are likewise suckers, constantly sleepless in worry. Okay, I want to ask you about something else. His eyes flicker. You mentioned true life, what would that be like? The life is true if it's free from fear, an eternal division among oneself and others. Mankind has seeds of greatness in it. A germinal will come, a return to trueness. It will be hardcore. How would you go about returning to this true life? Beat some bright lights to shatter falsehoods. Nerve impulses for the collective body. We are very much alike in basic structure. An odd enough beat would awaken everyone to a truer calling. In unity. Just like that. The speed freak is right in your face. His eyes burning. His comrades look on worriedly. The young man is dead serious about this. Rejection of the right-left axis. Emphasis on unity. Appreciation of some primordial mode of being. What does that remind you of? Sort of like fascism then? Nationalism, militarism, racism, an emphasis on a leader character are totally absent in hardcore. Shouldn't the ones that are more hardcore rule over the ones that are less hardcore offer them guidance? If some want to lead and others want to be led, I think they are welcome to it. So you're advocating a noise-based society? Many non-Occidental cultures share a beat at their art. Thus, they are closer to true hardcore life. There's just never been enough of them, and they had to rely on some extremely basic percussion. You keep mentioning hardcore, what does it mean to you? Utmost dedication, thoughts from the spinal cord, is a potent superlative as well. The term also signifies certain varieties of pornography that depict penetration, just so you know. <laughs> Thanks. Egghead usually has a better concept of the hardcore, he just really likes saying, Hardcore! Hardcore! His friend shouts from behind his mixed table with a smile, surpassing your own in wildness, a total moon face, and eyes full of naive wonderment. The term hardcore... Oh, I'm not going to talk about pornography. I will mention it also talks about... Okay, fine, I'll mention it. That's a pretty hardcore coincidence, don't you think? Really? Yeah! Let's change the subject. Oh yeah, sure thing. What's with the clothes? They're hardcore. You look like a woman with those earrings. Oh god. You know what I think? I think man, woman, and child are arbitrary divisions which serve to bind humanity to serve them. That's it? They're just clothes. They look outlandish. I thought there'd be more to it. It's just a style. You know, normal hard style. Anyone can wear it. My conceptualization is low. All right. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. Well, what now? Evening falls. The time has come to take the vow. Vow? The vows are blurred and flesh. What are you going on about? Lower intestine. The term is metabolic and circulatory system. What's my lower intestine going on about? Okay, what's the hard stuff? Fascism, Brota. Okay, stomach. I've made my mind up. About what is fascism, though? Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Rivershop's problems? Foreigners, financiers, leftist academics, liberals, I don't know, financiers? Yes, them. But also... Wormen. What? what? Wormen. Men of wor. You don't like them. They're insane. Their idiocy needs to be scrubbed off this world with rubbing alcohol. Wormen need to go back to the fucking kitchen. Really? That's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important. But the main thing is that wormen need to know their place. Am I having 
having some kind of stomach seizure? Stomach truth. You're having a stomach truth. Why am I getting this? Because you've said the hard things that others won't say. The goob things. You've said them many times. Fascism sounds bad, though. What if we called it something else like traditionalism? Okay, I've made up my mind. You're going to keep your voos, right? No. Keep your voos, bro. I am absolutely opting out. I'm not going to be played by an upset stomach. There's a slow, painful growl somewhere in your intestines, knocking on your alcohol-engorged liver. It is one of betrayal and disappointment. You betrayed me first. My poor liver is, is, is having some issues. Be close. The young man standing behind the mixer deck pumps his fist in the air. Long shaped trees grow on his silver belt buckle. True, hard, full of car. Say nothing. Hard car. Hard car to the mega. Internally coherent. I was wondering if you knew who killed the mercenary. No. All car. All right. He furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime, invisible movement of the music in the very real ear of the church. Hardcore! Ah! And then if I yell back... Is it though? Okay. But is it? Feels like you should reply. I am the mic and fo- Alright, we still don't know what to do with him. Let's see if I can talk to her any. She's whistling a melody, her trusty contact mic attached to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. I've also noticed that as time isn't advancing, we don't seem to be getting experience points for like engaging in conversation. And I think that's okay. Like I think, I assume the game gives you more to do than you could possibly do in the time space. So I think it's fine. I don't know. Continue. Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds traveling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know? But like, underwater inside a tree. She gives you a shy smile. And yes, I'm being more like Contact Michael, right? Don't even bring it up. I wasn't going to. No, no. I actually wanted to thank you for getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new associates, such as they are. How's everyone doing? Good, I think. Noid is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's been keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Sauna, the programmer, she's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of hers. She doesn't talk to us much, and the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. Now can you tell me about your associates? Sure. You helped us out. I can repay the favor. What do you want to know? The only, the only way we're getting experience is by completing tasks. Tell me about Sonia. Ah, oh, she's a bit odd, I have to say. Doesn't talk much. I'm not really sure how to vibe with her, you know? Seems like she's not in a very good mood most of the time. But earlier today, she told me about Welkins? And she seemed oddly happy, like she had some idea with those little creatures. Some artistic idea. I didn't really listen, I was busy with my mic. I saw grimaces as if it's the first time hearing the world. What about Tiago? Oh, the crab man. Still gives me the creeps the way he moves. But he doesn't actually come down that much, just climbs around the rafters. I just tried to stay away from the crab man. But he talks to Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. What do they talk to Noid? What, the, what do they talk about? Beats me. Noid said they get along somehow. They're both crazy enough, I guess. What does he do up there? Who knows? He doesn't really answer our questions, see? Not that it's easy to ask them. What are we supposed to do? Yell up at the tower? Alright, what about the others? Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Andre. Andre? He's a cool guy. Doesn't really come off as one, but he is. To me, at least. He takes care of shit. Sorry. I mean, he's got a vision. For what life should be, you know? He tries to push things until everything falls into place. He's an organizer. What is he organized? Nothing. But then again, there's nothing to organize around here either. He really wants this church thing to work. Must have taken it as a sign when he found it abandoned like that. Said it was an augury. 
I don't know where he got that from. Andre's not super intelligent. I've never seen him so psyched about anything, though. And he's often psyched. Looks sort of desperate, like it's his last chance or something. Or maybe he was just high. I mean, not that he does drugs, just high, you know. On life? Ah, uh, yes. Anyway. Could it be that he's balding? Him thinking it's his last chance? Come to think of it, yes. She laughs. This is the first time you've heard her laugh. He's in some kind of a self-destruction mode with that hair of his. Bleaching it like that. Probably wants to get rid of it altogether. Is Andre your boyfriend? Yes. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Noid. He's a four-burger, I guess. Like the rest of us. Okay, maybe not Egg. I don't know about him, but... Noid and the rest are from Fulberg, making the pilgrimage up north to visit the Palaceum. He's real hardcore about the lifestyle. Yeah, I got that much. What does he do? What do you mean, do? Like, for a living? Yes. He's a carpenter, trained and all. He's very good, he just doesn't have the mindset to work like that. In a shop somewhere. Is it because of his beliefs, the hardcore and stuff? Not to sound too dramatic, but... I wouldn't make light of his belief system when he's around. Noid's a serious person. He's serious about the lifestyle. What's this pilgrimage you're talking about? It's just something poor Fulberg kids do every spring. To pass the time, we walk the entire length of Boogie Street, up to Jamrock, or as much as possible. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know, man. Have you been down Boogie Street? It's a little bewildering. All right, let's say I haven't. Okay. Then you should go and take a look, I guess. Boogie Street is cool. It's got a lot of immigrants and all kinds of different people. Well, I might just do that if I make it there alive. Yeah. I hope you do. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? What about Egghead? What do you mean? What does he think he's doing when he yells all that stuff? Oh, that. He's the party boy. What's party boy? A nod at music doesn't really do vocals in the traditional sense. Vocals are thought of as rock. That's to say they're a bit backward. No offence if you like rock music, though. Rock music's called by me. Pachu, pachu, swish. Your credentials as the resident future man of Revachol are being questioned. Show her your hip with the times, Gramps. You don't have to tell me rock is backward. I'm the future man. I abandoned rock in the 30s. Stupid rock, spit. Ah, uh, okay. She nods. Anyway, even if you don't have vocals, you still need someone to say something every now and then, right? To urge things on. That's where the party boy comes in. He basically just stands on the stage and dances and yells how awesome everything is. It's very catchy. Where is he from? How long has he been with you guys? Actually, we don't know where he's from. Or who he is, really. One time we were out partying somewhere in Backwater Forberg. Or maybe even Coal City. I can't remember. Maybe it was Coal City. The worst of the Banlures. A wretched heap of closed down mines, even west of Jamrock, on the dusty slope of Montmartre, the remotest possible area of Revachon. No one even wants to exploit those people anymore. <laughs> Egg was yelling along to some jam someone was spinning, all night long. Just kept yelling until he didn't have a shred of voice left. When the sun came up over the mines, there were mines? Yeah, it was in Coal City. She nods. Egg came with us. He made this wheezing puppy dog sound all the way back. Couldn't even speak. It was definitely Coal City, because it took us two days to walk back to the fort. He just wheezed the whole way. We never really asked why he came with us, or who he was. I think his name is Jermaine. People are sweet. <laughs> you can see it must have been a great night. The memory causes her to go silent for a moment or two. You wish you'd been there. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about yourself. Me? Again? Yeah. I told you, I'm a silver bird. Then what does that mean? It means I don't answer questions about myself. Alright. Thank you. Sure. Um, I think I'm done. 